said, here we go. Let me see if you intuitively know what the answer is. If I said A equals BC and I said solve for B, you would tell me B is equal to what? Tell us the answer. Yes, everybody should intuitively know that B is equal to A over C. All right, now let's say for some reason you're like not 100% sure what we're talking about here. Basically, what I'm showing you is that we're trying to isolate B, which means I need to get rid of what? I need to get rid of C. So in order to get rid of C, I divide both sides by C. That's all that happens. That's it. So B is equal to A over C. B is equal to A over C. All right, now, if I'm looking at question number two, I'm solving for E, which means I have to remove the what? D. And if I remove the D, I'm going to have to do what? Yes, minus D from both sides. So that means E is equal to, right. All right, here we go. All right, now let's take a look at number three. All right, some of these are very similar. Area is equal to length times width. So your length is equal to? Right, so again, you're dividing both sides by W. So the length is equal to A divided by W. All right. Now, number four. Uh-uh, guys, guys, look, I'm working. All right, not being interrupted. So four, I have uh, A area equals one half base times height, which is the formula for area of a triangle. So I need to get rid of one half. How do I get rid of fractions? Multiply by the, right. So I would like everybody to write 2A equals BH. Now I'm not quite done because I'm trying to isolate H. So now I have to do what? H equals 2A over B. That's exactly correct. So H is equal to 2A over B. All right. Anybody have any questions with that? What you need? You're allowed to look wherever you want. All right. Here we go, guys. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at number six. All right. Everybody take a look at number six. I'm solving for pi. So I need to eliminate the what? The R squared. I need to eliminate the R squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by R squared. Come on, you're getting the hang of it now. So now pi is the area divided by the radius squared. Again, I know you all recognize that's just the formula for area of a circle. All right, here we go. Let's try something else now. So let's look at number eight. Does anybody recognize that? That's correct. That is Einstein. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. All right. That's exactly what that means. All right. So if I'm solving for M, I'm just dividing by? You're dividing by C squared. So M is equal to E divided by C squared. All right, now it's going to get a little bit harder on the next page. Anything we didn't do, that's your homework. Okay. So here we go. Now we're going to take a quick look at number nine, a little bit harder on this page. So I'm looking for solving for M. I'm trying to figure out what M is. So what do I need to do first? Yes, we're subtracting B. Thank you, guys. So now I have Y minus B equals MX. Now go ahead, tell me the next step. That is exactly correct. We're dividing by X. 
So M is equal to Y minus B over X. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, so let's do a tough one. Number 10, we're gonna solve for B1. All right, so again, we're just trying to go backwards. All right, so what do I need to eliminate first? The half, how do I eliminate the half? Go ahead, Jocelyn. And what's the reciprocal? Uh, 2A. <clears throat> so let's let Jocelyn do it. 2A is equal to? B1. Right, so now what do I have to do? Um, uh, mm, no, I'm trying to get to B1, right? So what's in the way? Nope. Yep. So what's in the way? B2 and H. Yeah. So I need to get rid of the H. Not minus H. How's the H? Right. You with me? Now do what? Minus B2. Yes, now we're subtracting B2. Complicated. Yep. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any questions? What? Why would C be the two to go? Uh, it's it's just why is different letters just represent different things, right? Well, I don't know why they decided to, or he chose to decide C for the speed of light. All right, here we go. So I would like everyone to take a look now at 13. All right, we're solving for Y. Solving for Y. Liam, what do I need to do first? What are you thinking, bud? What do you think? Yeah. Not yet. Now watch. Here's what I'm trying to show you. What if I said to if what if I said this? Eight plus five y equals ten. What do I do first? Oh, minus eight. You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna subtract what first? Minus eight. Right, subtract AX. Right, so BY equals C minus AX. Then you divide by B. Then you divide by B. Yes. You're exactly right. So Y equals C minus AX all over yeah. B. That feels good. All right. All right, so with that, let's take a quick look at... 16. All right. Now, highlight what we're supposed to be or underline what we're supposed to be solving for. We're solving for M. Anybody have a volunteer on this one? Tell me. Um, first, you would divide by M. We're solving for M. We wouldn't, we don't want to get rid of the M. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you. Yay. That's exactly right. You're dividing by X minus X1. Dividing by X minus X1. All right. So M is equal to Y minus Y1 over X minus X1. Very good. That was kind of tricky. All right, kind of tricky. Any, yes, tell me. Wait, like, if you do nine to the first power, would that just be nine? Yeah, okay. exactly correct. All right, let's have... No, we don't want to distribute because we're trying to isolate the M, trying to keep M by itself. All right, good thinking. All right, let's look at... 17 now. Now, 17, I'm trying not, no, notice it's the same equation, but I'm solving for a different variable. 
I'm solving for X now. Solving for X. What can I do? Divide by M first. Divide by M. So I have Y minus Y1 over M equals X minus X1. And now what? That's exactly right. So X is equal to Y minus Y1 over M plus X1. No, it's not. Here we go. I need help with 19. Does anybody know what 19 formula that is? What formula is that? Anybody know? Yes, sir. Do you know? Well, first, first, tell me what C and F in science are abbreviations for. Do you know? You're amazing. That is correct. Converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. All right. Or Fahrenheit to Celsius. All right. So, Mr. Barrow, tell me what to do first. Shh. Five, 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 Instead of saying divide by five ninths, you're going to say multiply by the. Right. So you're going to be multiplying by nine fifths, multiplying by nine fifths. So then it's nine, yeah. And then you add 32. Then you're correct. You add 32. Well, we can do that right now. Isn't that what Celsius is? Yep. If you wanted, in other words, if they gave you Celsius, you can convert it to Fahrenheit. And if they gave you Fahrenheit, you can convert it to Celsius. That's the relationship. Easy. Anybody have any questions with that? All right, here we go. Let's take a look at. Eighteen's too easy. Doesn't matter where they are. All right, so here we go. Let's look at 21. I'm solving for pi. Does everybody agree I'm dividing by pi? Yes. So that means if I'm going to solve for pi, I need to multiply by pi. That's right. Now, the reason I'm multiplying by pi is because I need to get pi in the numerator. So now I have pi times the diameter is equal to the circumference. And now here is the definition of pi. The definition of pi is circumference divided by diameter. That's the actual definition of pi. Well, because I'm trying to get pi by itself, correct? And right now it's in the denominator. Yeah, I need to move it. All right. Everybody's good with 21? All right. Let's take a look at 23. All right, what do I need to do on 23? What do I do? We're trying to ice we're trying to isolate V. Add 16t squared. Yes, you're gonna add 16t squared. Add 16t squared. So H plus 16T squared equals VT. Now what do I do? Now you have to divide by T. Now you divide by T. So add T, H plus 16T squared over T equals V. That's exactly correct. Yeah, guys, that's not that bad. All right. Ooh. Force is equal to the amount of force exerted on two objects is the gravitational pull times mass one times mass two divided by the distance between the two objects squared. That's what that means. All right. Yes, you need to focus. Force, that's force. So I'm solving for G, which means I have to get rid of what? 
So how do I get rid of dividing by d squared? Yeah, so everybody should be able to say f d squared equals g times m1 times m2. So now I'm solving for g, so I have to do what? Divide by both what? Masses, m1 and m2. You are amazing. So g is equal to f d squared over m1 m2 what mass 1 m1 okay number 27 the sum of the interior angles of any polygon is n minus 2 times 180 we are solving for n. Divide by 180, good. S over 180 equals n minus two. Then you add two, thank you. So n is equal to, you are amazing. S divided by 180 plus two. All right, let's take a look at 29. All right, we're solving for B. First step is easy. Second step, not so much. Subtract A squared. So I have B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. Now, how do I get rid of A square? What? stop dividing by b no no here's the answer tell us um was not what i was looking for yes no what are we talking about stop dividing so oh, here we go What? Actually, you finally know one. Go. I'm going to. What? They can't. I actually know, but I have two answers. You are creating your own math. Stop. Listen to the answer. Well, I'm definitely going to tell you. Wait. Oh, here we go. Tell us. Very good. You take the you take the square root of both sides. That is correct. Thank you. You take the square root of both sides. All right. How do you undo a square? You take the square root. Oh my goodness. B equals the square root of C squared minus A squared. Last year you learned square roots. What do you, the square and the square root cancel each other out. It's like addition and subtraction. No, oh, smarty pants in the back has a good thought. Listen. I'm pretty happy with you about that, but you cannot take square roots through addition and subtraction. That was a good thought though. Finally, I'm able to tell you that. Finally, no, all right. To undo a square, you need to take the square roots. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, now I know. Actually, I can do them all, but, oh, you whiners. Here we go. I'm solving for R. So first thing I have to do is divide by four. So SA over four pi equals R squared. And for those of you guys who were paying attention, 
You do not divide by the square root. You take the square root. Same difference. That's exactly what I said. R equals, I don't even know what the same difference means. Blame it on Jocelyn. She does everything. All right, here we go. The fun continues. 31. You're welcome. Solving absolute values. People, what do I do? 4x minus 5 equals 7. 4x minus 5 equals negative 7. Now we add 5. 4x equals 12. X equals, wow. Now add 5 again. 4x equals, so X equals, yes, negative 1 half. All right. Everybody's good with that. All right. Now on number 33. What do I need to do first? Divide by four. So now we say absolute value X minus five equals negative two. And for my thinkers, we're just gonna say the answer is? Absolute values cannot equal a negative. All right, now, for question number 35, we're still isolating. So I need to do what first? Yes, three minus X equals five. Now you write them twice. Three minus X equals five. Three minus X equals negative five, right? Now, personally, I move the negative X over and that becomes X. Then I move the five over. Three minus five is? Yes. So one answer is negative two. Move the X over. That makes it positive. Eight. So X equals eight. So negative two or eight. Negative two or eight. All right, let's knock out 37. All right, don't be confused by that. All right, all I have to do is write two equations. X plus four over two equals, and X plus four over two equals, multiply both sides by two. And then we subtract. Six minus four is two. Again, multiply both sides by two. And then subtract X equals. Yep, we are great. Thank you. All right. Okay, so now let's take a look at 39. The first thing I need to do is subtract eight, negative five. 3x plus 1 equals, what does that equal? Negative 20. Now remember, we do not do 8 minus 5 and get 3. From there, absolute value of 3x plus 1 equals, equals what? 4. Because we are dividing. 3x plus 1 equals 4. 3x plus 1 equals negative 4. So 3x equals 3. x equals 1. 3x equals negative 5. x equals negative 5 thirds. All right, now I ask the kids to get out their calculators just to review fractions on your calculator. It's not that we need it, all right, but we're just practicing, making sure you can use your fraction. 
All right, so I have three fifths X minus one fourth equals one sixth and three fifths X minus one fourth equals negative one sixth. All right, so now everybody's using their calculator. They're typing in one sixth plus one fourth. And somebody needs to tell me what that is. Do we do we agree that it is five twelfths, right? And then, and then we multiply by the reciprocal. So my final answer on this one was yes. What? I want to hear this simplification. Sometimes it would be 6.25, but all right, here we go. Next, adding one fourth. So three fifths X is equal to one Then we need to multiply by the. So final answer is. That's not possible. Anybody have any issues with that? Now, that's what I mean. You got to use your calculator now. You're trying to make sure you can use it efficiently. Okay, great work. Now your job is to finish everything that we didn't do. You're, you're welcome. No. When we come back.